Hello and welcome back to the Go Engineer YouTube channel. My name is Wes McMurtry and I am a certified applications engineer for Go Engineer. Before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. In today's video, we will be working with the SolarWorks CAN Tech DB to create a custom strategy for drilling and hole milling operations. This process will include manual creation of tool operations, then saving those operations as a strategy in the Tech DB. Then we will modify the strategy from the tape DB so that it will automatically create the operations we need and also produce the required tools based on variations in the feature set. The primary benefit to programming toolpaths with the technology database is to significantly reduce the time it takes to prepare parts for manufacturing. First step, we're going to take a look at our machine. And so we'll double click here and just a quick uh, check. We're going to check to see out per set to mill inch. And another thing, our tool crib. I went ahead and uh, created a custom tool list here and also created a custom tool crib. And we're also going to look at the use tool cribs only. And that's what we're going to set this to for today's use. And we'll keep it there. And uh, we'll go ahead and say OK to this now. Now, next up, we're going to take a look at the stock. But before we do that, uh, really, I want to emphasize what we're looking at here today. Today, we're really, the terminology we're going to be stressing is cylinders. So each one of these features that we see here are pockets slash cylinders. And that's what we're going to be working on. So let's take a quick look at our stock. We'll just use the uh, bounding box and we'll say OK to that. And our coordinate system, we're going to look at this. And we can see that it's set up OK. We've got X, Y, and Z. Our top face is selected for our Z direction there. And we'll go ahead and say OK to that as well. Now we're going to take a look and we'll go ahead and set up our mill part setup. And we'll go ahead and select that. And we'll come out and select the top face. And that'll uh, determine the uh, direction of the uh, tool for us. And we'll be coming down to the top face there. And that'll recognize any features that we have there. So we'll go ahead and say OK to that. Now from here, I'm going to go ahead and just do an extract machinable features. So we'll go ahead and select it. And it's going to come up here and give it just a second. And here we have what's called an MS hole strategy or a, a multi-stepped hole strategy. So this is the, the this is the default strategy that comes out of the box. And I'm going to go ahead and generate my operation plan. And we can see here it created a couple of operations, a center drill and a drill. Not a whole lot, really. I mean, it's, it's kind of your basic setup there. And what it's really asking us to do is, is really go in and start customizing that strategy and that's what we're going to do today so first off we're going to take a look at this quarter inch drill that it put in there for us now the problem is it selected a quarter inch drill but we have a three inch or three eighths inch diameter hole that we want to drill through so we're going to go in and we're going to double click on our drill operation just a second there we go it's coming up there we go and we're going to take a look at a couple things here so the first thing we're going to do is we'll go over to the tool crib and we'll look down and we're going to find a 3 8 drill that was in this tool crib. And we'll make sure we select that. Now we'll go to our, our drill hole parameters and just to check, you know, it is pecking and that's fine. Uh, but we will go now over to our feature options tab. And inside that, we'll go to the parameters tab or button. And what we're going to do is we're going to select, use this uh, machine hole parameters to select the top of cylinder one and the bottom of cylinder four. Cylinder four is the uh, 3 8 diameter uh, gray portion that we see down there. And we're also going to change the hole diameter. So it recognizes cylinder four and the diameter of that cylinder being 3 8 Your top to bottom. So we've set up that. We've set that, that cylinder uh, up for that drill, the 3 8 drill, to go from top to bottom. And we'll add a tool drill tip length in there as well. So that will go ahead and push all the way through our stock. We'll do a quick preview of this as well. And we're going to take a look at kind of rotating this just so we can take a better look, kind of a closer look at what exactly is going on there. So we can see our tool path there and we're just going to kind of set our tool there. We can see just went just went right to the edge of the stock and that's fine for what we're doing today. Uh, we're just focused on creating these these uh, top to bottom cylinders, how to start them, how to finish them. So there we go. We have a drill operation in there with the create drill. Now, next up, we're going to go and um, we're going to create a new machining hole operation. But instead of a hole, we're going to do a rough mill as a hole machining operation. So we're going to rough mill out our next feature set here. So first off, we'll go and select a drill or an end mill, a three quarter inch end mill. 
we're going to start at the top of cylinder one and go to the bottom of cylinder two. So we'll take a quick look. Here's our uh, multi-stepped hole strategy that we're still using. We'll say OK to that. Now let's go make a couple of changes over here on our roughing tab. We're just going to change a couple of things here. Since we're not going to do any finishing operations, I'll go ahead and set that zero allowance and make that step over just a little bit smaller. There you go. Now we'll go ahead and go to our feature options. This is where we're going to spend most of our time uh, today. So back to parameters. Remember, we're doing a rough milling operation. We're going to do that from top of cylinder one to the bottom of cylinder one. See there, it's previewing the cylinder four, but we're going to change that to cylinder one. That's because we want it to mill that diameter of cylinder one, as according to how it's how it's been designed here. So here's our end mill. Looks good. We'll say okay to that. So we'll go over and take a look at our rough mill. We're going to rename that, give it a name, and we'll call it first step. And we'll uh, RM for ref mill on this. That'll give it give it some name. Give it us a name there, so we know what that is. That's our first step uh, for ref milling. So let's go ahead and we're going to copy that. I just control drag that that operation. I'll control drag again, and that's essentially the copy function in our operation tree. So I've got two copies of that first uh, step RM. I'm going to reorder that now. I'm going to put that first step that we just created at the top there, and we'll kind of work our way down the list here now. This this copy, we'll rename it, and we'll call it second step. And from there, we'll go ahead and rename this last step here. We'll call it third step. So we'll type that in there. Now we, we have three operations here. So let's go ahead and double click on our second step. Remember, we're, we're just programming cylinders. So we're going to one, two, and three cylinders there in yellow. And now we'll go back and double click second step. And that'll bring back up our, our operations parameter. And again, I don't, no need to change anything. These are copies of that previous operation. We'll go back to our feature options and go into parameters again. And again, we'll kind of repeat here. So we'll top of cylinder two to the bottom of cylinder two. And we'll change our hole diameter now to cylinder two as well. You can see here, there's our, our preview of what we're, what we're wanting to include in this feature set. And we'll go ahead and say, okay, now that should be okay, except for I didn't change the end mill size. So that end mill cannot mill that. And we're not making a drilling operation. So we need to make that, that end mill a little bit smaller. So it's a three quarter inch pocket with a three quarter inch end mill. Probably not going to do a lot of milling there. So we'll change that over to our tool tab. And we'll go to tool crib and we'll, we'll pick out a half inch. There it is, half inch in. Make sure you always choose select here. Preview that and there's our tool path. So that's looking good there. Three steps down, around and out. We'll say okay to that and we're going to do the same here now we'll go back up to third step operation double click it and we'll go back up and take a look at our tool crib and we're going to go ahead and change the uh the end mill for this one we know it needs to be changed and we're going to use a 3 8 diameter for this and just a quick look at the roughing operations and then we're fine there back to the feature options and now we'll go look at the top of cylinder three, bottom of cylinder three, and we'll look at making the whole diameter use the cylinder three there. We'll say OK to this. We'll do a preview first there. There we go. There's a couple tool pads there for us. Say OK to that. So there's my there's my part. We've manually programmed our part there. We started off with a kind of a default strategy for multi-stepped holes and we just built upon that so we, we went ahead and created what would be kind of a normal setup for a part like this and then you know of course we could we could take this and simulate it maybe post the g-code out and we'd be off and running out at the machine tool uh, we're going to take a quick look at simulating here first just to see that everything's okay that looks fine we'll show a difference there and the green is good so we're looking for green no reds or blues in there and uh, 
parts there. So everything did what we wanted it to do there. Let's go take a look at our feature tree again. And we can see here, this is our multi-stepped hold feature. Now we, we programmed this strategy now, or at least we've set up the operation so that now if we go and save this operation, we can either overwrite that, that multi-step or that MS1, or we can create a new strategy. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a new strategy here. We'll call it four step pocket. And that'll be the name of our new strategy. All right, so there we can see our MS1 has now been named four step pocket drill. That's our strategy there. So we can go from here and we're going to take a quick look at our tech DB or the technology database that comes with SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS. So here it is, we're gonna drag it down onto the screen. I'm gonna resize this just a little bit. And we'll go take a look over here at our mill settings. And then we have, under strategies, we have multi-step holes. Now remember, there's our MSH1 that we started with. And here's our new, I click the drop down there, our four-step pocket drill. And this is the list of things, operations that we've created. And these are the parameters that it's it's, that are driving that that operate those operations there. So we'll go ahead and close this for now. Just wanted to show you the tech DB there. And we're going to go ahead and we're just going to get rid of this. We're going to delete this and then just kind of walk back through the process of now that we've created that that strategy, what it would take if we had just opened this model up and went and used the extract machine world features, what could we expect there? But first we're going to go ahead and open up a different configuration. So we have an, another model here that has a another multi-step hole that has varying depths and different diameters for the cylinders. So once we run the extract machine features, we're going to see what exactly happens uh, based on this new configuration that we pulled up here. So we've got the original and then we have this new, uh, this new entity there, these new features that it's going to have to look for. So we already have mill parts set up. We'll just do an extract machinable features here. And it came up with the two features here. So we've got MS hole one, two, and I'm going to go ahead and reorder that. I'm just going to left click and drag that up above and drop it above uh, MS hole one there, just to go from left to right. No other reason than that. So let's go and uh, look at our parameters. So I right clicked on that strategy and it did default back to the original strategy. So I do need to pick the strategy that I want. And that's the four step pocket drill that we have there. We'll do the same here. Right click, and go to parameters. And again, we'll select from the strategy there, our new four, four step pocket drill. So now I have my custom strategies that I just created a minute ago. We'll generate our operation plan and we'll generate a tool path. Now, when we come over and look at our operations, we'll see that the countersink looks okay. The drill looks good. That's the three inch drill or three quarter inch end mill, half inch, and then a three eighths uh, end mill. And then over on the other set of holes, the same thing, same drill bit. So that, that diameter there though, is a half inch diameter hole, a through hole. And so it used that. So that's where we're going to get back into the technology database and set this up using what's called use expressions uh, so that we can drive the tooling set or the tools based on diameter of the holes or the cylinders that it sees there. So see there, it did, did drill and mill it out, but what if we wanna change those tools and, and, uh, and make sure that everything follows suit the way we want. So we're gonna take a look at uh, our four step pocket drill here. So there's a thing, a few things we're gonna change. So uh, the center drill is fine. We're, we're fine with that. But the drill, the drilling operation, it's set to, if I come down, scroll down over here and look at tool summary, it's, it's using a set tool or a select tool. We're going to change that to use expression. So expression is going to allow me to basically follow the, uh, the feature set. So if the whole diameter changes, what I've got here is basically cylinder one. I'm going to change this though up here for step for cylinder one. And I'm going to go up here and take a look at changing that. Uh, yeah, there we go. So cylinder one will make that cylinder four. Cylinder four was that hole at the bottom that was a half inch diameter. And we'll set it to minus and zero for a constant, zero for a constant. Now what that's what that's doing is saying that the drill should be 
the same size as the hole. So if the hole size changes, the drill uh, selection, the drill tool selection will change as well. Now let's go take a look at our rough mill operation. Our tool summary, same thing. There's, it's forcing it to use that three quarter inch, but we're going to again use the use expression. But this time we're going to set this up. Uh, it's, that's good. Cylinder one's fine. We're going to set this up to uh, to minus, and then our constant of 0.125 for the uh, the lower expression and the upper expression. What that's doing is basically saying to uh, the tool diameter to be no more, or no less than one eighth of an inch of the diameter of the uh, of the cylinder slash pocket that we're wanting to mill. So instead of uh, instead of that three quarter inch or that one inch, will it'll change based on the diameter of the cylinder. Again, kind of a wash and repeat here again, we're gonna go back to our tool summary and use our expression for cylinder two. And we'll set that same constant in there at 0.125 inches. The tool diameter, we'll make that constant as well. So this will allow us to, based on the diameter of the cylinders, drive the size of their, our end mills rather than using the select tool. Now I'll just go back and make sure I did change that. That's fine. Now I'll go back and we'll do the last one here uh, under, again, tool summary. Use that expression of cil for cylinder three. And we're going to drive that diameter of the tool using these constants here. And then we'll just look at that. We'll say save to that. And it should be good there. We'll, we'll close tech, the tech DB out. Everything's saved to that strategy now. Now we can see here we've got a 0 0.75, a half, and a 3 8 That's not, we want, to, we want to make those a little larger, and we're still using that, that 3 8 So we're going to come in back to our feature set, and we're going to just delete those. We'll walk back through this again, and we're going to look at what that's going to do. Those changes that we made in the Take DB, what is that going to uh, do for us here? So when I extract machinable features, again, I'll have to go back and uh, select my parameters and I'll change my strategy here to four step pocket drill and right click and parameters and we'll find the strategy there for four stop or four step pocket drill and we'll go up and we're going to take a just generate our operation plan now. Let's reorder that. I just I just left clicked on that, reordered that again, just so that I'm going from left to right. Uh, no other, no reason other than that to move those around. Now, if I look at that, I've generated my operation plan. We've generated our tool path. I can see I have a three eighths drill bit for my three eighths hole down here. I have my half inch drill bit uh, for my half inch hole uh, or cylinder for my through hole. And then in my end mills have also updated as well based on the different diameter, the larger diameters of each of those cylinders. So that's uh, that's why we changed uh, and forced the Tech DB to recognize those holes and the diameter involved and assigned the tool to that base rather than having it use the select tool for us. And so here's our part being shown in difference there. And we should have all green and that looks pretty good there. Steps used in this video can be used to create a foundation for creating basic toolpath strategies and or build from this more complex task such as holes with fillets, chamfers, and tapered walls. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe and leave us a comment below with any topic you'd like us to cover in a future video. Visit our website at GoEngineer.com for access to professional training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online technical resource. Take care.